Well, since it's 2.30 and we do have a substantial amount of information to cover here, I'd like to welcome you all. My name is Bill Whitlock. Now, my background is a, an analog circuit designer. So, one of the things that we have to deal with is the word ground. Of course, over here you'll call it earth. But earth has a definition that depends on who you ask. If you ask a utility engineer, somebody that works on high voltage power lines and power distribution, his definition invariably involves dirt, soil, real earth. Not just a term, but he literally means earth when he says ground or earth. But in electronics, we use that same word to refer to a common return path. A portable transistor radio has a earth. And this is where I'm going to introduce um, a concept that I don't believe anyone else has ever talked about. I've, I did a limited amount of research on the internet and I could find no one that actually explained where does this voltage E, this voltage difference that exists between two outlets, where does that come from? I've heard some very weird ideas on where it comes from, so I decided to investigate. Other people have tried to ascribe the effect to leakage currents. Leakage currents are normal because there are also unavoidable capacitances inside equipment between the active side of the power and ground. And by definition, a capacitor will change. So we see most of our energy at 60 hertz where it belongs, at least in the US. But look how much energy we have here at 180 hertz, 300 hertz, 420 hertz. These are the third, fifth, and seventh harmonics of 60. Now, those of you that are right in the engineering school may relate to Fourier analysis. Now, the unbalanced interface, as I was just making allusions to, I can't believe that after 50 years, consumer audio still uses it. It was okay back in the days of 78 RPM records and AM radio when everything was in one big wooden cabinet and the cables were no more than a meter or so long. That's what it was intended for. In fact, that's how the name came about, the RCA cable. Now, let's talk for a minute about the balanced interface. It is highly immune to noise coupling. And in fact, it is the only technique used in phone systems to this day. They started using it in the 1920s in the US, and it still lives on. They haven't found anything better to replace it. The problem is avoided altogether by letting the shield currents flow in pathways that are not shared by signal currents inside the equipment. Remember that currents flow in circles. What drives them is this little voltage difference in the, in the ground system. So if I connect a shield connection between these two boxes, if I make those currents flow in a path that's entirely their own and separate from everything that's going on in the, in the box, Now bear in mind, this applies only when there is current flowing from end to end in the, in the shield. So in many applications, this is not a worry. Things like microphone cables. Because normally you don't ground a microphone. So there are no ground loop currents flowing in a microphone. But if you do a snake, for example, with mic level signals, and it's grounded at the console, and you ground it again at the snake, and if you have existing cables with drain wires, consider using the Neutrik ENC connector with pin 1 disconnected at the receive end. And if you have an unbalanced interface, a transformer is a perfect solution for eliminating the pathway for the ground loop current. There is essentially a, an electrical barrier inside a transformer that prevents any current from flowing from the primary to secondary. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. You've been a very nice audience. Thank you for listening to a small sample of this AES tutorial.
To watch the full-length version, you can visit our AES Tutorials page at www.aes.org slash publications slash tutorials.